some fighters. Here comes a new challenger. Not confined to simply fighting or action games, life or health systems have been a major component for video games since their conception. With our basic combat system created, in this Games Without Code video, we'll show you how to create a health system using Bolt. For this health system, you can create a new macro, or simply modify the combat macro we created in the previous video. We'll also want to add three additional animations, a light, medium, and hard hit impact. For the sake of this video, we'll also use an additional character in order to better visually demonstrate on screen. With that said, to create this health system, you don't need characters, animation, or a game environment. You simply need a few UI elements which you can create yourself or purchase, or simply download and use the free UI elements we created and used in this video, which we place in the link in the description below. You also find a link to download the completed Bolt macro we'll create in this video. Let's begin by opening our scene and adding our health bar UI elements. We'll also create four buttons to represent the four attack types in order to better visually see what's happening on screen. Before we begin, let's quickly go over the logic and basic structure of our health system. Like in most games, our attacks will be broken up into six attack types, light, medium, heavy, special, super, and blocked attacks. However, in this video, we'll simply demonstrate four, light, medium, heavy, and blocked attacks. Each attack will do damage in the form of taking a certain amount of points or percentage from our player or enemy's health, with light attacks being the lowest and super attacks being the highest. For blocked attacks, we can either choose to dramatically lower the amount of points or damage the player will take, or to have the player take no damage at all. For this demonstration, we'll choose to lower the damage the player will take, otherwise a player can simply block the whole round without suffering any consequences. That said, there are several ways, which we'll cover in future videos, you can achieve balanced gameplay even while using a health and combat system that doesn't damage the player's health if they block an attack. Before we begin creating our health system, we want to ensure that our health UI image component image type is set to field. And we want to then set the field method to horizontal. This way, as the player or enemy's health goes down, it can easily be visually shown to our players. However, if you can't or don't want to use the UI image component for the health bar, you can also use the same method we'll demonstrate and simply apply it to adjust the X axis of the transform scale of the player or enemy's health bar. With that complete, let's now add a bolt flow machine component and create a new flow machine macro. Or if you're following along from our previous basic combat system video, you can simply add the player's health system in the character's existing macro. However, for the sake of this video, we'll create and use a new macro, but in any other case, we'd simply add our new mechanics to our existing character flow or state graph. Before we begin, let's first go over the logic we want to create. If our player is hit, we want to deduct a certain amount from their health, and we want the amount to be determined by the attack the opponent is using. However, if the player is blocking, we want to offset the amount of damage the player receives. Lastly, we want to visually represent the player's newly reduced health value by reducing their health bar and playing a hit impact animation. So with our graph, graph inspector, and variable window up, let's begin by creating eight object graph variable. However, if you're following along from the combat system video and using that same macro, you'll simply need to create six variables. Our first variable, will be a game object variable, which we'll use to house our player character. Our second variable is for our player's animator. Our third variable will be an image component scene graph variable, which we'll use to store our player's health bar image component. And all our other variables will be object graph float variables. 
we'll create one to store our player's overall health value. The next will be for our light attack damage value. The next two will be for our medium attack damage and our hard attack damage. And our last float will be for our blocking damage offset. With our variables now created, let's start by using the start event to set our player's health value and we'll use a float literal node to set our player's health value to 100. Let's then set our character's animator variable by getting the animator component from our character's game object variable. And lastly, we want to use our player health variable to set the fill amount on our image component. To do this, we'll use an image set fill node and set our player's health variable as its input and then use our scene health bar image variable as its target. Before we continue, let's test out our graph to make sure everything is working so far. And in order to make sure our fill amount is being set, let's set our fill amount to zero in our player's health bar image component. We can see at the start of our game that not only is our character's animation variable set, but our player health as well as our fill bar is set However, currently our fill bar is using our player health for its value, but since the range of our fill amount is only 0 to 1, it doesn't correctly convey our player's health. So in order to fix this, we'll need to create another object graph float variable, which we'll call player health value and to correctly convey our player's health through our health bar, we want to set our player's health value by multiplying our player's health by 0.01. So let's move our image set fill amount to our update event node and use our new player health value for its input. So if we now press play, we can see that the value that's being set into our image component's fill amount is now one. If we change our player's health to 50, we can see that our health bar is lowered to half and the fill amount that's being set is 0.5. With that complete, let's now set up our attacks. For this, we'll use an on keyboard enter event as well as our buttons. First, we'll create scene graph button variables for each of our buttons and place them as their values. We'll start by creating our light attack. We'll first use an input key down event, and for the sake of example, we'll simply use one as our light attack key. As an alternate input, we'll also create an on button click event and place our light attack scene button variable as its target input. Let's next create a player health set variable node. And for its value, we want to subtract our light attack damage variable from our player health variable. Lastly, let's add an animator set trigger node and we'll use our character animator variable as the target input and then place our light hit trigger parameter for the trigger name. With that complete, let's now test out our new functionality. But before we do so, we need to assign a value to our attack damage variables. So for the sake of example, we'll say our light attack deals 5 damage, our medium attack deals 10 damage, and our heavy attack deals 20 damage. If we now hit play, we can see when we hit our light attack button that our player health goes down and they play their hit react animation. And if we change the value of our light attack, we can see how the new value 
affects our player's health and health bar. With our light attack hit working correctly, let's duplicate our graph and set its values for our medium and heavy attack damage. Lastly, let's incorporate our blocking damage offset into our health system. For this, we'll first need a boolean variable that represents if our character is blocking or not. This is one of the reasons that when we created the basic combat system in our previous video, our character set a boolean value while they were blocking. But if you don't already have one created, let's create a boolean variable which we'll call is blocking. With our variable created, instead of creating a new set of graphs to represent the damage offset for each of our attacks, let's simply add it to the sets of nodes we've already created. To do this, we'll first need to create a branch node, which will check and see if our is blocking boolean is true or false. If it's false, we can simply have it go to our existing set of nodes. However, if it's true, we want to use our damage offset variable to decrease the amount of damage the character will take from the enemy's attack. So we'll create another set variable node for our player's health. And for the value we want to set, we want to divide our attack damage value by our blocking damage offset value and then subtract that from the player's health. With that complete, let's now add our new set of nodes to our other two attack node groups, being sure to adjust our attack damage amount variable with this appropriate attack no group. With that complete, if you're not using the combat system macro, let's also quickly set up our block button to disable and enable our block boolean. With our basic health system complete, lastly, we want to make sure that we set a value for our damage offset. For our example, we'll use the value of 4. This way, the player will only receive a quarter of the damage that they would if they weren't blocking. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.